G'day YouTube, my name's Lance, welcome to Bundy Bear's Shed. Well the weather report, 15 to 27 and foggy in the morning and it'll be sunny later on. So, so they're saying early morning fog, then the sun will come up and be a nice sunny day, no rain. So that's a good thing, <laughs> we're looking forward to that. Um, it is a nice time of year with spring just around the corner I think isn't it? Um, when's winter? June, July, August. So we're nearly out of August. So spring will be here and it's, yeah, bloody nice weather. It'll be real good. Um, not much happened in the shed. Well, nothing really, apart from getting the 135 ready to go tractor trekking and camping this last weekend gone. And um, it was a club run event, Rum City Vintage Machinery Club event. And um, we went up to Mullet Creek which is about 40 kilometres north of Bundaberg here, and um, Rob and Dorothy have got a, a, um, a block on Littabella Creek, and uh, it's, sort of, it's been approved to have a 220-site caravan park there. And it, it's not there yet, but we were allowed to camp there as a group, and we had amenities and things like that, so, so that was good. So we last week we had to get the... Um, get the tractor all tidied up and loaded up and serviced up and not that it needs much service but anyway fueled up and um, we headed up there on the Friday and we went tracking around and um, on the Saturday we oh we left at probably eight o'clock and we finished at three and we went to Rocky Point Retreat and they'd arranged to have a toilet there for us and the um, Judy and Renee um, Pete's missus, they had the Smoko vehicle, so yeah, when we got there, half past 10 or something, we stopped and had a cuppa, and um, the people at their caravan park on the Rocky Point Retreat, well, yeah, they come up and had a look at around the tractors and had a chat and all that, and I flew the drone across the top. I'll, I'll pop a little bit of that in the end there, just a bit of a scoot around the area. Pretty shaky old drone footage, but anyway, it's all right. Bloody beautiful area up there, and... Um, then we come back through Rob's farm and um, his family farm there and scratched around, had a look and a few bumpy tracks and had some lunch and yeah, went driving past the old prawn farm and things like that. So um, there was some dirt tracks, there was road, dirt roads, there was bitumen roads, there was bumpy bush tracks, um, washed out gullies and all sorts of things. So um, yeah, look, it was just a great time. and. Um, Friday evening, Peter and Renee were doing the catering for the club. They're club members, but they chose to do the catering and um, had a fire and camp oven roast with um, beef and pork and um, roast veggies and, oh, yes, it was good, good eating. <laughs> we didn't go without. Then um, through the rest of the trek, they, um, of, of, of a morning we had a cooked breakfast, you know, bacon, eggs and sausages and things like that. Um, not that we probably needed it, but anyway, we had it. And then um, we um, went up to, on, on the Sunday, we went up around Rob's main farm and had a look in his sheds, all the stuff he and Indy and Adam have collected over the years. And we parked up at the, um, the Rum City Vintage Machinery Club, um, the museum shed up there. Um, Rob and Dorothy have, have set aside a, a hunk of the farm and they've put it into a, a proper museum charitable trust and they've built our club a shed. There's going to be a heap more sheds there going up there and um, they've built our, our club a, a shed there and currently the shed's 18 metres by 10 metres and that's one third of it. So it, it's going to be another 36 metres by 10 metres going onto it yet. And um, Rob and Dorothy, the, the, the trust has supplied the shed for us and we lease it off them. And um, it only just got finished like a few weeks ago and it's still a bit raw around the outside. A bit of landscaping needs to happen and a bit of organisation inside so we can start to fill it slowly. Um, with museum displays, which is something we sort of, well, I'm, I'm looking forward to the museum displays and um, I think what we have to watch is that the club members don't just use it to chuck shit in because it's, it's leased as a museum 
and when the when it's organised, perhaps in you know six, twelve, eighteen months, whenever it is, um, and we are, we're open to the public to come on bus trips and things. I won't be open to the public in general, but um, there will be open days that they're going to work with, and we have to have it open as a display. So there's a bloody aeroplane coming down low over the top, and um, yeah, so we don't want it as a where everyone just puts the club junk. It has to be a proper, neat, tidy, dusted, looked after museum display. So um, the club has four cane harvesters. <laughs> Look, they're a pain in the ass. They're, they're a lot of money, um, a lot of money in just maintaining that stuff. So um, some of the early ones, they are quite historic, but um, yeah, we got to look after them and put them under shelter and things like that and some of them are falling apart and a uh, big money pit. But anyway, we'll worry about that another day I suppose. But um, I've just been helping now, I've just sent Alan a plan, a bit of a mud map of my thoughts on how it could look inside there so we'll see how that goes. But, um, but yeah, we got home Sunday afternoon, um, had lunch back at the camp and we all packed up and said our goodbyes and, and headed home. Um, yeah, look, it was just a good weekend out. Um, it was relaxing. I, I felt I come back far more relaxed than I normally am. Normally I've got a bloody list of jobs a mile long and I'm sort of nearly stressing a bit about what I need to do next, but um, what I need to film. And I, I didn't film a lot, but um, there's some footage there. And um, yeah, so I come back feeling good, quite relaxed after a weekend, a weekend off. <laughs> A weekend away from the humdrum, so that's good. Um, yeah, the, the, yesterday I, I've left the canopy. I, I had to leave the canopy on the back of the Ute from Billa Wheeler, um, and so today I've got to try and get into the shop. I've, I've taken the canopy off now. I've got it out in the um, out where the John Deere is, and I've got the loader under it. So that's going to be its new home out of the shed here. Um, so I've got my ute back, I've got a tray back, I've got the canopy off, I've got everything cleaned out of the ute, I've got the ute washed, I've got the 135 washed. But I see last night putting it in under cover, I didn't do much of a job of washing it, there's still dust and shit on it, so I'll have to give myself a good talking to. Um, and yeah, as for packing sheds and shifting stuff and all that, very little of that happened either. <laughs> I don't know, I just make myself busy sometimes. My knees are still playing up, so I'm working from home. But I do have to get in to um, I have to get into the shop today, and um, we're, we're doing some renovations on the rental house in town. So um, look, just because Barry's doing them, I thought I can't miss out. If, if Barry from Man from the Mist doing a reno, we'll have to do one. But he's got better skills than I have, and um, we're paying a bloody builder because. Um, yeah, she'd be look like the man who built the crooked house if I did it. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm a bit of a wood butcher. I, I always reckon if they started making um, woodcraft welding rods, I'd be all right at it. But <laughs> anyway, I'm, I'm just not 100% into wood. I, I do enjoy the hobby side of it and making boards and things like that. But building, look, I can do it. I know how to do it and I've done it. But um, yeah, it's not my favourite thing. So, so I've got a meeting in the rental house with the builder on this afternoon sometime and we're going to run through a bit of water damage we had off the roof, um, the roof leaked so we've had that fixed and a bit of water damage on one of the ceilings so we're getting that whole room renoed and putting another bedroom down the bottom. So anyway, it's only money, eh? Um, yesterday we were working on the contracts for the sale of the business, um, that's going forward. Um, no signatures as yet, but we're all working together and they've, they've started off with the standard contract come through and um, we're talking about stuff and um, how to work it out and, and how to do that. So um, that's a positive. It's moving in a forward direction. So, um, yeah, we're, we're pretty... Um, oh, yeah, I suppose we could, we're sort of a bit excited about that. Yeah, the change, um, that'll be a good thing, I reckon. And so... Um, Anyway, we'll, we'll have a look and see, <laughs> see how all that goes. Um, hopefully it all goes through. Um, there's a finance clause and things like that in it, so it's, um, it's not signed, sealed, delivered, and um, it's not 
unconditional or anything like that. So um, we're working with that. Um, well, but Judy and I are ready to retire. We hope it goes through and um, um, there'll be, a, <laughs> like I was saying last week, there'll be a lot of changes in the shed here and we're going to set up some nice working bays and all that. But um, uh, I don't know, because of the workload, I may drop a few stews off or, or stews aren't hard to do, but the rest of the video, I haven't been doing much anyway. I've been that busy. Um, and with training new owners and things like that, she's going to be pretty well full on. Um, I slashed the neighbour's paddock the other day. Um, the little girl next door, the granddaughter, she's talked them into having a horse. And um, so they wanted a bit of the paddock slash. So I said, yeah, all right, I'll do that. And I was just going to do it, you know, just replace the diesel and... I don't mind slashing, it's good fun, but yeah, they give us some diesel and a cart and a beer and bloody <laughs> life's good. And um, so she's got the horse over there now, um, Shelby's the horse's name. And um, I said, oh, Shelby, like a Mustang. And the little girl says, oh, no, Shelby from, um, you know, that TV show, Sheldon. And I thought, oh, I don't know about that. But anyway, we'll, we'll see. That's, that's, that's her worry. <laughs> that's not my worry. But... Um, but yeah, so we've slashed the paddock next door for them just to help them out. And, um, but apart from that and work, as in office work I've been knocking through, um, yeah, the, there's not a lot being done. Um, my knees are playing up quite a bit. Um, I went away for the weekend, then I forgot my bloody Panadol osteo stuff I'm supposed to have. <laughs> oh, Sunday Arvo, I was happy to chew on a few, I tell you. <laughs> But anyway, it was a great weekend. Um, off, I might sneak in the trade tools later. Those red boxes I get with the plastic inserts, they've got them 40% off or 50% off or something at the moment again. So in sorting out parts, um, those boxes come in bloody handy. So um, we'll be sneaking in there shortly and seeing how we go. But um, look, I, I just haven't got a lot of news this week. I, I haven't been up here buggering around. I just got the ute ready, got all the camp and stuff organised. I'm still cleaning up. I haven't cleaned the camper properly from coming back from Cooney yet because we had to get stuff out and get the camper folded down. So it got dry enough last week that I got it folded down and I have to um, take the little pressure cleaner up there now and give it a good bougie and give it a tidy up. But today's going to be one of those days... Um, yeah, it might be in the solicitors. Got to go into the shop. There's pallets building up there and boxes and do that and get to trade tools. And, um, yeah, just... <laughs> Where's your day go, Lance? Oh, buggered if I know. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, um, we'll just see how it goes. Um, the shed's on the back burner a little bit at the moment because we have, just have so much else on the go. There's a club meeting um, at the Pensioners League Hall Sunday 1pm. Um, this week, so um, yeah, so Sunday's out and Father's Day Sunday anyway, so I suppose the kids will come out or um, Tim will, I suppose Tim will have the kids, I don't know now, yeah. Um, the the grandkids, Aerie and Arrow, their mum got married the other day, so found a new bloke, so that's good. Um, yeah, so um, I don't know how to say his last name, it's about a mile long, but anyway. Yeah, you know, Asian fella, but yeah, by all accounts, he's a ripper bloke, but I just, I just don't know him. <laughs> so the, the kids speak highly of him, and that's all you can ask, isn't it, really? So, yeah. <laughs> but look, it's going to be short and sweet this time. I'll, I'll tack a bit of, um, um, a bit of trekking footage on the end here. Um, but yeah, she's <laughs> pretty slim on what, um, what happened, but I, I just haven't been in the shed um, with my knees playing up and that. I just... I, I've been trying to, uh, I've been doing little bits of clean ups and sort outs, but I've been really trying to back off and um, look after them. And I seem to be able to get them good, then I bugger them up. But um, now we're not going anywhere. Um, we, we got no commitments until the weekend of the 8th or 9th of November. So that should give me a fair bit of time at home to um, get stuff organised and, and work from there. So, so there you go, short and sweet this week. Um, once again, thanks for stopping by. I'll let you know if the business goes, if we sign all that up. Um, we are hoping it does go through. Um, we're, we're just ready, you know. You sort of feel ready. It's time to do that. And, um, 
the other party are fairly keen. Well, they're keen, they're pushing along, so um, we'll just see how we go. Okay, thanks for dropping by, and um, yeah, we'll catch you all next week, eh? All right, see you.